it's great to be here with our buyer community. We have a terrific lineup of speakers and some really cool demos queued up for all of you. We are thrilled to be here to talk with you about Connected TV and what you can do today, what's coming up next on our roadmap, and also what the future holds. Now, before we get started, I'd love to have a show of hands from all of you. Please let me know how many of you are planning to run connected TV campaigns in 2018. That's actually pretty good. This is cool, OK. Um, we think that's good, but we think there will be more. And um, a key point for you to realize is we think the time is now for connected TV. Um, one key thing I need is a slide pointer. <laughs> Stage left. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay. Now we can really rock and roll. All right. Before we dive in, let's also talk key terms for the conversation, starting with OTT, which means over the top. <clears throat> That's over the top for a cable or a satellite set-top box, TV content that you're delivering in that way. Great example for you would be watching CNN on Sling TV or Handmaid's Tale on the ad-supported version of Hulu. Or, I bet you a few of you have been up to this, Stranger Things season two on Netflix. Pretty fun, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm watching it tonight. Uh, so connected TV is more about the physical hardware. So uh, this gentleman here probably has, as an example, a Roku streaming stick in his pocket, right? Or maybe tomorrow. Uh, I've got an Apple TV here up on the uh, table right here. That's another good example for you of a connected TV device. Uh, you probably have a Microsoft Xbox in your bedroom. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if you have a Samsung Smart TV. So these are examples of physical devices uh, that represent connected TV. And of course, these two uh, areas are really key in terms of how they come together. So what's interesting about connected TV, it's already mainstream. So more than half of the United States already has connected TV devices. That's 170 million people. And, um, I'd be concerned, actually, and a bit surprised if many of you in this room didn't have a connected TV device uh, in one form or another. So that's a massive installed base. And one of the things that we want to do at AppNexus is we want to bring the power of programmatic precision and couple that to the reach and impact of traditional linear TV and bring it to all of you. That is really our goal. And that's what we're here to talk to you about today. Let's talk a bit about the commercial side of this. So between 2015 and 2018, it's projected that pay TV ad revenues will decrease by around 20%. In the same time period, though, OTT ad revenues are expected to go way up, 275%. It's pretty dramatic. At the same time, OTT viewing time uh, is expected to quadruple in six years. And in fact, next year, it's expected to be about 14 and a half hours, which for those of you who follow TV viewing and watching time, uh, that's really starting to rival traditional broadcast television in terms of how much we're all watching uh, through OTT. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if you maybe are using DirecTV now, maybe, uh, or you're streaming on Fubo TV, uh, the World Series. But what we're seeing is more and more people are using these services. The install base is really large. And as a result at AppNexus in 2017, we have started to see connected TV transactions happening on the platform. And from Q1 to Q3, we've seen some eye-popping growth for connected TV campaigns on the platform, which is really encouraging. That said, as encouraging as it is, there's a, a question here, are we at the tipping point yet? And we think we're not. And that begs the question, what's holding buyers back 
from that bigger move from moving all TV budgets or big swaths of them over to programmatic. So on this topic, uh, AT&T AdWorks recently conducted a, stir a survey and we've done our own informal market research at AppNexus and really there are five key points that have surfaced as potential challenges with connected TV buying and what's needed to really hit the nail here and make this happen in a bigger way. So just to give you a flavor of these in terms of what we've heard, access to premium supply is certainly one. Uh, two is creative quality on the big screen in the living room. Three is actually getting CTV behavior to align with TV behavior. And there's questions about KPIs. Fortunately, AppNexus, in its mission to create a better internet, is also really focused on creating a better video internet. And for this, connected TV is really front and center in our goals. And so working on our own and together with partners, uh, a number of whom you'll hear from today in this session, we're really working to address these five key points uh, that will make connected TV easier and more powerful for programmatic. And that starts with what is arguably possibly one of the most important of the five, which is the first I mentioned, which is access programmatically to premium connected TV supply. So in this area, we're doing two things. One is we're working hard on direct publisher integrations for connected TV, and we're working to expand our offering with partner SSPs. And there's three major categories for connected TV supply that we think are important here. The first is access to premium broadcasters. And a great example for you of that is a direct integration available with CNN and their CNN Go app. Other examples for you are Discovery Communications or A&E Networks, which is via Freewheel. A second category are OTT services. So these are live and on-demand streaming TV services for which we have access for you to four of the most popular, including Sling TV, uh, which is very popular. Uh, that's via Telaria. The third is CTV apps. So for CTV apps, we have, um, let's say, specialized applications in food or travel uh, or emerging applications that are really unique to connected television. And in this case, we've got Pluto TV. Pluto TV, which is a direct integration with AppNexus, allows you to access hundreds of high-definition channels for free. It's been called the Spotify of video. Uh, it's a really powerful and interesting new service for watching TV for free on connected television. There's also, in a similar vein, kind of a free Netflix called Tubi TV that we have a direct integration with. This gives you access to thousands of free movies and TV shows in partnership with Lionsgate and others. There's also Newsy from EW Scripts, uh, a national network of in-venue Roku's, Chive TV, and many others. And all of this amazing CTV supply is available to you across hundreds of connected television devices from major partners in the ecosystem. What better way to showcase the power of connected TV supply that we have for you than for me as an honor to introduce to you Marissa Preston, who's the Director of Programmatic Operations at Turner Broadcasting, to talk to you about CNN's OTT supply that is now available to AppNexus programmatic buyers. Got Thank my own you. clicker here. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Eric. I'm very excited to be here today to talk about CNN audiences and our OTT offerings. We're here because we all know that consumer viewing habits are changing. The TV landscape is shifting, and news is shifting with it. If we just take a look at last night's midterm election results, which I'm sure everyone here tapped into CNN for, we know that consumers are viewing this content in many different ways, and it was a significant night for viewership. The story for us keeps going back to how do our fans want to consume our content? And 
We are now distributed across more platforms than ever because of partners like AppNexus and where our brands can tap into on these platforms with OTT. That's the power of an engaged audience. If we look at uh, stats according to Freewheel just two years ago, OTT consumption and video views only made up 8% of the market share. Today, it's at 32%, and Turner is very much on trend with those, with those statistics. We really see the value in live, authenticated viewing consumption here. And OTT is a platform that's truly right for its time. You know, you can reach consumers when they want, where they want. It's flexible, it's anywhere, at any time. It's high quality and it's very individualized consumer experience. Um, it's really a marketer's dream with the lean back, full viewership experience that's binge worthy and tapping into a live broadcast. But more importantly, it is now available across more service providers and more premium content that you can tap into than ever before. So we have to be there. Turner is, has content that's now available everywhere. We're now spanning up to 60 different distribution points with OTT being the highest opportunity to date. The Turner focus is to create an optimal viewing experience for our fans anywhere they want to be. We're now distributed across more screens, more platforms, and more devices than ever before. And we're very thoughtful and strategic about the types of tech stack and partners that we want to work with so that we can not only create premium content at scale, but give our fans the user experience that they want. So what does that give to the brand? Well, now more than ever for news, it is imperative to be in a trusted, transparent marketplace that has a highly engaged audience that's relevant. And for CNN, that's OTT. So let's talk a little bit about the OTT platform itself. For CNN, that is CNN Go. This gives our fans the viewership of live programming and on the go. Our fans are now enabled across Smart TV, Amazon TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. For AppNexus specifically, we are live on Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV today with plans to expand. Um, the CNN Go experience gives our fans the opportunity to authenticate and use their cable subscription to log in to tap into unlimited full episode content, original series, and live broadcasting. It also, the CNN Go app also gives our viewers the ability to consume that curated content anywhere, anytime with live broadcasting and curated content. So again, what does, that, what does that give to the brand? You're in a high quality individualized experience, but it's in a multi-device platform. So when we think about CNN Go and OTT, you really have the best of CNN. It really correlates to what the news network and our cable news network was built off of, of live broadcasting. We allow our content composition across live stream, full episodes, special events like midterm elections and the inauguration, short form and clips, and digital exclusive series. The majority of our content composition sits within the live stream where authentication is required. In fact, 88% of our inventory lives here. And this is really where we see the value of an engaged audience who is a loyal consumer and coming back. But we also allow for an unauthenticated experience between special events, like last night, uh, and then short form and clips in our exclusive series. So the key takeaway here is not only are you tapping into a subscription user, but you're also reaching those cord cutters. So prior to authentication, we will allow users to have a 10 minute free preview. And then on the back of our special events like inaugurations, elections, and live breaking news coverage, our authentication wall is dropped. So let's talk a little bit about engagement. Um, we have seen engagement metrics far exceed our expectations this year. And this is off the backs of a highly politically packed uh, breaking news live agenda of 2016. Our video starts are still up 82% and our time spent is up 38% at 2.2 hours, which is huge if you think about it. Um, if you take that context to cable TV tune in, the average time spent there is 26 minutes. So not only is this a consumer that is spending time here and engaged with the content and the demand, um, but they're also indexing as early tech adopters 
tech influencers, influencers among their peer set, and sophisticated in how they're consuming their content. So we're not only seeing growth in our engagement and where our consumer and fan want to be, we're also seeing growth across our supply path. You can now access on the AppNexus platform up to 120 million video impressions a month. We've seen 42% growth in our live environment and 78% in our short form pre-roll clips. So not only do we have a highly engaged audience, but we certainly have premium scale here. And lastly, when you're thinking about who is the OTT consumer or the CNN fan, we know the audience profile of OTT consumers are younger, richer, and smarter than that of traditional cable. The median age is 42 with an income of 85K plus. So you're tapping into that affluent audience, but CTV ads are also proven to perform. Now we all know the issues with a cookie list, device ID free environment, uh, measurement challenges, tech adoption here, but that doesn't mean that we're not seeing promising results with performance. Um, according to a Yumi and Nielsen study using eye tracking, ad recall, ad attention, brand lift, and viewability all outperform in the OTT platform than traditional desktop and mobile. Obviously, brand lift and your brand awareness campaigns are correlating to the huge time spent for these consumers. So while we're waiting for the tech to advance with the measurement needed in this space, we still see the performance that's needed to, to shift the, the monetization this way. So with that being said, I just want to end on the note that this is a high quality experience. CNN is heavily investing and sees the huge opportunity with OTT and with the live experience here. And for us, it's prime time all the time. So thank you very much for allowing us to highlight this. I'd like to introduce Michelle Smith, who is a Senior Director of Product Management at AppNexus. Thank you so much, Marissa. As we've heard from Eric and Marissa, the time is now. Not only do we have great access to supply, but it's easy to buy CTV. We provide the ability to host and transcode video creatives, providing multiple renditions that can span from mobile devices all the way up to connected devices on the big screen. And no longer are video creatives poor quality desktop videos repurposed for the big screen. We have just added the ability to upload high definition files via our API. These videos can scale to hundreds of megabytes, providing the best possible quality for your message. And our approach allows for our partners to transcode these videos for hundreds of CTV devices. And it supports server-side ad insertion, allowing for videos to be inserted directly into the stream to decrease latency and to get around ad blocking. We're also working to provide multiple ways to target um, video creatives. We offer demographic indexed channel targeting. You can use the demographic data for a television network or from a program like Sci-Fi Channel for people like me or Good Behavior also for people like me to make sure that you're able to reach your message. We also provide household targeting. You can bring your audience data to publishers who have first party registration data via CTV and OTT apps. By marrying the two data sources, you'll be able to target to household income, gender, age, geography, and many more demographics. This ensures that you can reach the audiences you want. And when working with publishers who are using device ID, you can target to them as well. We anticipate there being many more opportunities to target users on connected television devices. This is why we're working closely with the IAB and CTV partners to ensure that there's a universal identifier standard for CTV devices. 
We're also looking to the future for being able to target to different audiences. It is my pleasure to introduce Andre Swanston, the CEO of True Optic, to share what's coming soon. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, really exciting day today. So uh, a few hours ago, we announced a partnership uh, with AppNexus that we've been working on for months and months and months. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means in terms of the additional capabilities that uh, both on the supply side and the buy side will be uh, on the AppNexus platform. So when we talk about uh, over the top and connected TV, you know, one of the things that I like to point out is we, we really try to consider it professionally produced content. And I think that was talked a lot um, by the, the previous speakers. Um, so and you upload the video of the cat chasing its own tail to YouTube, even if you watch it on your Samsung smart TV, we're just not going to count that as, as OTT. And so one of the things that we looked at, though, is across um, over the past year, we measured where we're seeing what percentage of the ads are served across OTT. And we're seeing only about 9% of that happening on desktop. Uh, and that's actually been in steady decline over the last 24 months. Um, mobile has somewhat plateaued over the last 12 months, around 19 to 20%. And all of the growth has been on connected TV. And by that, we mean not only uh, the smart televisions and the connected devices like uh, Roku and Apple TV, but also the gaming consoles, uh, Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, MPD Group put out a, a research report uh, about six months ago that said there's actually more time spent uh, per week now on Xbox and PlayStation streaming video than playing video games. And so one of the challenges that, that the industry has really faced is, is that, well, there's cookies on desktop, but there's no cookies on connected TV. There's device IDs on, on, on smartphones, but there's only actionable device IDs on about 15% of the connected TV uh, inventory. So one of the things that we've worked to do is really come up with a proprietary household ID uh, that can be used across all connected TV devices. And so the way that we power that was over the last two years, we've done a lot of effort on building up a household graph. And so what that means is that every unique household, about 75 million or so in the US, um, has its own persistent ID. And that can be associated back to uh, user agents that you see in a bid stream uh, for connected TV, whether it's Apple TV or PlayStation 4, um, cookies from, from laptops, uh, device IDs from smartphones, the IP address in the house or multiple IP addresses in a house, and that can be rolled up. And so the question that we ask is, great, so you have this household graph, you have IDs, what does that actually mean in terms of our ability to leverage data? And so one of the things that uh, we did, and this is really exciting, it's gonna be available on the AppNexus uh, platform, both on, on supply and demand side, is have what we call always on data partners in the data marketplace. And so these are a couple dozen leading data providers, both for leveraging first party data, as well as branded third party data, even outside of a registered user environment, right? So this other 80% you know, or so of the available ads that are across connected TV, where there isn't a you know, registration back to a Sling TV or, or Hulu, uh, and it's just maybe validated through TV everywhere or standalone OTT publishers, still having the ability to leverage both first party and third party data on those platforms. So that's really, uh, really exciting. And then in addition to that, what we'll have is what we call on the on-demand data partners. So these are ones where uh, it's not uh, updating the audience automatically every 24 hours and available in real time, but it, with any sort of pre-planning within three to five business days or so, you can create custom audience segments to leverage across connected TV with any of these data providers. Now, what this means is, um, in addition to the ability to do uh, location and context, in areas where you know, maybe data is obfuscated in terms of device ID or IP address, there's no registered user data. Um, that's, so that's still a great tactic that can be used across connected TV and, and that's something that people do across linear. But also now, even in environments where there isn't registration data or there isn't a device ID, to be able to say, what is the household income based on Experian data? You know, is this a, a, a married um, a female age 25 to 34 based off of Comscore data? Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about political uh, from the previous panel, so looking at voter registration data. And it's really exciting to say all of the same strategies that people are used to using across desktop and mobile or addressable set-top box uh, linear television are now actionable at scale 
um, both for publishers and advertisers um, on the AppNexus platform. And tying this all together, obviously we, we've talked about the ability to do planning, the ability to do segmentation and targeting. Uh, something else that everybody's getting really excited about is how do I loop this back into understanding what the ROI was or what the sales lift was across my connected TV campaigns. So also the ability to tie back to whether it's CRM data that may be housed at a, an Experian or an Axiom or uh, looking at uh, Shopify loyalty card or POS data for offline sales or just simply knowing, hey, I, I serve this ad uh, to come to Yankee Stadium, you know, we'll tap into to Ninth Decimal and see if somebody came to Yankee Stadium or, or TiVo set-top box data to understand the correlation between your connected TV buying and your linear television buying. So if I can leave you with one thing, it's that really the barriers to capabilities across connected TV and OTT um, through our partnership with AppNexus are really, been, are really gone, quite frankly. It's very hard to find a strategy that you can do across digital or linear that you can't replicate uh, across connected TV. And that's really exciting. Um, and so with that, and I, and I just mentioned the ability to use Comscore across connected TV, so it's perfect timing uh, to introduce uh, Aaron Festa from Comscore. Thanks for having me out. Uh, hopefully most of you are familiar with Comscore. We are an audience and advertising measurement company. Our, our legacy is in digital measurement. Uh, about a couple years ago, we merged with Rintrack so that we now also provide television measurement of audiences and, and advertising. And so we think of ourselves as a cross-platform measurement company, but one of our objectives, as we've been hearing about the changing nature of consumers and media and evolving technology, our objective is to sort of future-proof uh, measurement. So when we think about how do we future-proof measurement, one of the things that we have invested quite significantly in in the past couple of years is what we call the Comscore Total Home Panel. And the Total Home Panel is literally an opt-in panel, so this is not something we, uh, you, you know, we, we intrusively do. It's an opt-in panel where we install a device at the household level that sits between the incoming internet connection and your Wi-Fi router in that household. So we're able to then collect all Wi-Fi activity in that household, everything. Uh, so I don't know if anyone here has a, um, an internet connected refrigerator or thermostat, more likely, right? So we, we see that activity. But probably the thing that is most interesting that we receive the most inquiries about right now is what we're talking about, OTT devices, connected TV. What's going on in households? And uh, our panel's large enough that it's obviously not a uh, census level, but it's large enough that we have scaled data that matches a, a US representation of demographics that we can start to project insights around what is going on with the use of OTT devices, what's going on with multi-device usage at the same time, who's streaming what, what content, what platforms, et cetera. So well, there are some interesting insights that we've gotten out of this, and, and we'll just kind of walk through some of those insights and then talk about where we go from here. The first is, I think what you've been hearing from Marissa and others that this today is that OTT is really a mainstream kind of behavior at this point. Um, more than 50% of households are streaming content on an OTT device today. Uh, and in some of those households, it's interesting, uh, the usage is quite significant. I think you saw some of the CNN state, uh, data. Uh, we, we are seeing very high numbers of hours per household of viewing OTT data. And as you might expect, Netflix is a primary driver of that. So if you look at uh, penetration or adoption of, of various content platforms, Netflix Flix is the leader in OTT platforms. But shortly behind, I don't even know if I would call them second tier, would be the Hulus, the YouTubes, uh, you know, the Amazons of the world. So they are picking up significant adoption in households across the US. And Hulu is an interesting one uh, in terms of time spent per household. We see Hulu at, uh, you know, as one of the biggest drivers of time spent. So those households that are streaming content that way, uh, they're spending quite a bit of time and engaging very deeply. Um, we also see that the makeup of a household really does ha have a, play a role in, in how they're using these OTT devices, how they're consuming content. So a third of households with OTT streaming behavior are cord cutters, you can call them. They don't have a, a, you know, a regular cable or satellite subscription service. Uh, and yet, 50% of those, I think, are, are 
streaming only, meaning they don't even use an over-the-air antenna to receive television content. They're doing all of their TV consumption via the OTT device, which is very interesting. And obviously, you can guess the demographic makeup of, of that segment. It skews younger, it skews more of what we would tr traditionally call the millennial audience. Uh, and, and you know, we get a lot of questions about, well, what's that going to mean as time moves forward? Their behavior is so different than what we would see in the 55 plus crowd. Do we think that those audiences, those younger audiences are gonna start to behave more like today's 55 year olds? Well, I kind of doubt it because you're looking at many of these are cord nevers. They, they, never, they never had, they never, never lived a life where they subscribed uh, to, to a video service, right? And so they're getting very, very comfortable with streaming all of their content via something like an OTT device. And you can see um, they spend uh, 61 hours a month with OTT, whereas the, 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 the total cord cutter audiences are spending up to 81 hours per month. So they are massive numbers, uh, really, really big numbers in terms of time spent with OTT. And then the next wave of content options, we've heard a little bit about Sling and other things. We think the next wave will really shape the landscape to come in OTT, right? So um, skinny bundles that get put together, Sling and, and other services like that are gonna play a big role in how adoption grows, I think, in terms of the OTT market. And uh, the networks are now uh, getting much more active. Uh, you'd see network TV apps that are coming out for OTT devices, and we're seeing the, the adoption and, and, again, the streaming behavior engaging with those apps start to tick up uh, as they get more serious about really placing content in this environment. So lots of very interesting uh, insights coming out of our total home panel about that. Where do we go from here? I think Andre uh, set it up well. He just mentioned something that we've announced recently is we want to start to help power the marketplace uh, in OTT audience buying. So we're, we've partnered with True Optic as a kind of a first partner to say, we want to take what we know about demographics. We have our, our VCE, Validated Campaign Essentials, is our demographic measurement tool that we use in the digital marketplace. And we can use the demographics that power that tool to sort of score and create audiences that are available through the True Optic platform. So if you do want to buy the women 25 to 54 demographic in an OTT environment, we're helping to power that through True Optic, right? And we're very excited about the potential there. And we think that that's going to grow significantly as we, we move forward. What else? Where else do we go? Well, the total home panel becomes a very interesting asset for us because Again, we see deeply in those households everything that's going on. Um, you know, gaming console usage, Netflix viewership, other services viewership, things like that. And what we believe is there's an interest in having audiences uh, that make up those segments available to buy in a programmatic fashion. So because inside of those households that are part of true, the total home panel, we see not only their device usage, we see their online usage as well. So a cookie, think of a cookie identity. And then traditionally in digital, we have what we call our census network, whereby we see uh, the majority of traffic on the, on the web. And we're able to then essentially score audiences online against their likelihood to fit into these viewing behavior categories, right? So if I, as a buyer or a seller of media, want to buy heavy Netflix, Netflix consumers, uh, because I believe that they're spending so much time on Netflix, I've got to catch them wherever they are, because I can't advertise in there, uh, then I can make that audience available and buy them in a programmatic fashion. And I think that that's some of the very interesting and exciting uh, places that this takes us. We're very excited about the Total Home Panel. Um, we, again, it's, it's meant to be a service to both the buy and the sell side of the industry. So we'd be happy to talk to anyone and appreciate AppNexus giving us the opportunity to partner together with them as well. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Michelle. So at AppNexus, we're working to align the functionality of CTV with television viewing behavior. It's why we've created the ability to target to the first, last, or any ad slot in a commercial break. So if it's critically important for you to be the first or last message a user sees, we can do that quickly, easily, and at scale. And if your only objective is to be seen in the first quarter of the football game before all the fans realize that their team is once again going to lose, we can do that too. We also offer many other um, KPIs that you can target to. 
it's important to be able to reach your budget. So we provide the ability to find your audiences at scale and to get good quality video. We also have realized or acknowledged that completions are critically important for video so that you can get the entire message. On CTV, we see averages of completion of 90 to 100%, and the overall average is over 95%. This is much higher than desktop video. We also offer the ability to do frequency capping so that users are not having to look at the same message over and over and over again during a binge watching season, session. You can work directly with publishers to use their CTV, or use their device IDs for frequency capping, whether it's once per hour or episode or three or four times per day. We're also looking to the future. We're currently working on doing viewability and optimization based off of um, VAS 4.0 for connective television devices. And as you heard from Andre, we're also working on being able to do gender and age targeting at scale. I'd now like to bring Eric back up to talk about a little bit more of what's coming to the future of connected TV. Thanks, Michelle. And to wrap up, as I promised, there will be some demos. I don't think we've had a video session ever without some demos to close things out. So uh, uh, really glad to be able to share this with you. Uh, what we're going to talk about just in this uh, last, oh, can you keep on the uh, slide, please? Uh, this last bit, back to PowerPoint, please. Thank you. Is uh, the world of connected TV advertising models. and. OK, let's just talk connected TV advertising models. Uh, now I guess we can switch to the, uh, the Mac the laptop. Thank you. There's three areas uh, that we're going to touch on. And this is really a bit forward looking. This is work that's being done by third party companies that we'll take a look at first. And then we'll take a look at what AppNexus is doing on its own uh, in this area. So let's start. You probably realize that the 3D gaming segment is really huge. And actually, a big part of it lives on connected TV. That's back to that Xbox example I talked about before. This is an example you're seeing of trafficking of standard banner creatives and video content directly into a 3D scene that allows advertisers to be able to get their message across, very similar to what you see in a sporting event, where you see logos that are kind of mapped across um, the field. In this case, it's an ability to take your message and get it into a real-time 3D gaming environment. This comes from a company called Anzu.io that specializes in 3D advertising. And what you're seeing here is viewability measurement in 3D from the perspective of the viewer. It's a method called ray tracing that effectively allows you to trace through the scene and see which images and which videos are actually visible to the end user and measure on it and report on it. Uh, the second example we're going to take a look at uh, is context-aware video advertising. You've heard a lot about machine learning here today. Take a look at that logo in the upper right, and you'll see there's a grid. And that grid is effectively machine learning that's being used to find flat surfaces in real-world video imagery. And what you're seeing here is examples of different brand logos that are being mapped with 3D perspective, including the more challenging problem of object occlusion, so that you can actually bring what is like traditional 1950s product placement uh, into the future, into a kind of 2017 model. And uh, we think this can be really, <laughs> really interesting uh, in a number of ways and fun too. Thank you for that. Um, in terms of its potential. This was uh, built by a company in New York called Uru that came as a spin out from the Cornell Technion program. And both of these companies, I think it's uh, really important, are looking at, you know, this is the future of trading session and the future of connected TV. What kinds of ad models may become important uh, in the coming time period? Can we please switch to the Apple TV now? And then uh, next, last but not least, uh, we'd like to switch to what AppNexus has been doing uh, on our own. And in this case, we've been hard at work in two technologies that are important for a lot of what you heard about here today. 
which is server-side ad insertion and client-side ad insertion. Both of these are important technologies to deliver either individual pre-roll ads or video ad pods and commercial breaks for long-form, especially premium content. This is a demo app that our engineering team in Encino built, uh, the App Nexus Apple TV app. But under the hood is an Apple TV SDK that we've built for connected TV publishers, which in turn is meant to help publishers light up supply for you as buyers. And before I jump into the specific example, it's worth mentioning that one of our key buyers for connected TV this year is a buyer called Operum, and they specialize as a programmatic technology platform to be able to buy especially for movies and entertainment. And that's what the example is in this case that you'll see. Uh, and it's a really powerful use case for connected TV because you're looking for that big impact on the big screen. Just who in the hell do you think you are? App Nexus, of course. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, this is a fun example. OK, folks, she's a little shy, so give her a hand when she comes out. So this idea. is using the AppNexus video ad server. It could be our programmatic demand. And folks, this is not your parents' banner advertising on the desktop. <laughs> this is really an entirely new world, and you can be part of it. Um, so we think that's really exciting. One final example to wrap up here is video ad pods and commercial breaks. Uh, the IAB standard for commercial breaks uh, is called VMAP, and it allows you to deliver multiple ads, uh, as you see on long-form content on TV. You'll notice in the lower left it's saying playing ad one of N. In this case, there's two ads in the ad pod. Uh, this is a trailer from Moonlight, fantastic award-winning film. And it's, again, the kind of cinematic content that you can deliver as buyers now for your clients on AppNexus. Um, I'll just jump ahead. Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, another example for you. All right, you get the idea there. Pretty fun trailers. And then this is the main content that follows. And you know, from all of this, you're getting a sense for the low latency, the user experience, the high quality of what's possible. All right, we're targeting liftoff for connected TV for next year. If we could go back to the slides, please. The slide clicker, there we go. There's that slide, OK. That's what we just walked through. And really, to wrap up now for you, uh, and thank you so much, all of you, for your time and attention here today for this uh, deep dive into connected TV, where we want you to be expert and really be able to, to make this happen in a bigger way in 2018, together with us and the industry, is these are really the three key points, right? And you just saw examples of it. You can deliver high impact, high definition creatives as buyers for your clients to connected TV, number one. Number two, access to really premium supply is possible broadcasters, OTT services, CTV apps. And number three, through a variety of different means, you can start to reach audiences on connected TV. That said, thank you again for having us. And uh, we're really excited to work with you on this. Mm -hmm.